It's a really clear and cold January evening. It's about four o'clock now and we have minus 10. And we've received a lot of snow, as you can see here. So let's try and get our way towards the backyard observing place. It was a couple of days ago we got a humongous amount of snow and I shoveled it away but uh, now we can see something new and exciting here on the on the mount on the AVX mount it's my new Apple refractor the TS 102 APO it's time for its first light for astrophoto I haven't 100% decided yet what I will photograph, but uh, I'm leaning towards the bubble nebula. Another shot of the telescope from uh, down into in the snow. You can hear this distinct sound from the snow which it makes when it's colder. You can take a look here at the backside. I decided to use the 0 0.6 reducer it's the altar reducer flattener together with the 183 camera and an h alpha filter uh, this will be interesting first light for the tsa oh. And this is the third blizzard in one week and now the snow is really towering high outside it goes up onto the windows and we barely can look out and my poor AVX I've been shoveling and shoveling and shoveling and <laughs> now it's again like it's just uh, uh, out of the snow a little bit and uh, this time I can't even open the door because there is too much snow. And now it's the day after the blizzard and we can look at look out at the devastation. Somewhere there is my AVX mount. You can see the top of it. It's not much sticking out of the snow and the snow is now reaching up to the windows and beyond. Actually it reaches up to the roof. After all the blizzards and all the shoveling of snow, we finally have a clear night. And I put up the telescope in what I call my new observatory. My observatory built of snow. This is the most amount of snow I've ever seen in my life. It's not far from reaching to my head. As someone said, perhaps I should paint the walls of the observatory black to decrease the reflections, but it might be hard. I have the bathroom mask on now and I've done the focusing 
which which was an unusually easy thing today because it was already in focus and I don't know why it shouldn't have been since I had an H alpha filter last time. We can have a look here. I have the 0.6 reducer together with the ASI camera and uh, today I, I have a distance to the sensor of uh, 56 55 millimeters which is the optimal according to what it should be I tried a shorter distance last time I was out but I, I got some uh, distorted stars at the edges and the form of the stars they were like uh, comma signs uh, tells that uh, I should have a longer distance to the sensor so now I have that and we'll see if it helps anything I also had some problems last time with eggy egg formed stars and I think it was the guiding that wasn't perfect it was quite good around one arc seconds but still uh, I'm operating now at uh, resolution of 1.1 arc seconds and that uh, is unforgiving so today I will try uh, try a multi-star guiding for the first time it will be really interesting so I will try two new things with this new telescope multi-star guiding and a new distance to the focal reducer flattener uh, I will continue uh, taking today uh, O3 uh, captures. Last time I took H alpha, and uh, this time there is no moon, so I have uh, good hopes for the O3 to uh, punch punch through today. Uh, I will use six minute subs at a gain of uh, 250 it's my usual setting so let's see what happens